Hello there everyone, I'm Rachel Lowe from Physiopedia and this is week five of the Managing Children with Cerebral Palsy course. Um, here with me today is Lorena who is one of the course facilitators and has been uh, working on week five with us and for us. Um, but I just want to start by saying um, before we get into talking about week five, what I'd like to introduce is World Cerebral Palsy Day, which is on Wednesday this week, October the 5th. And so we sent out the course email um, today, which is Monday, and in there are, and in the course as well, is, is all about World Cerebral Palsy Day. And um, we've spoken to one of the committee members, Leon Taylor, mm -hmm. and there are lots of ways that everyone can get involved. So what I'd like to encourage everyone to do is because we are probably the largest group of individuals in the world at this time who are all talking cerebral palsy all together. So what, what I'd really like every, to do is to encourage everybody to get involved in some way on Wednesday in World Cerebral Palsy Day and the ways that you can get involved are all in the course and in the course email. So please do have a listen to Leon and have a read of that and do something to raise awareness of cerebral palsy on Wednesday. Um, so that's World CP Day. This week, week five, we're talking about um, activities of daily living, play and vocational training. And so at this point, I'd like to hand over to Lorena. Lorena, perhaps you could just introduce yourself to everyone briefly and then um, introduce the topics for week five. OK, good. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, I'm Lorena. I'm from Spain. I'm a physiotherapist. Um, I started working with CP Childs like 12 years ago, something like that. Um, I studied in, in Chile, Bobat therapy, then in Spain, Boita therapy, and then I decided to quit my job and go to Africa. This happened like six years ago. Uh, in Africa, I was working fully with CP Childs. Uh, only one year I was working with in an ortho center with amputees, and now I live in Afghanistan. I work for the ICRC and also I'm working with CP Childs. I'm very happy. That's here. great. You've worked really. in a lot of different places. You must have some really good experience of working with individuals with cerebral palsy from all around the world. So, so yeah, really. what um, would you like to just have a chat about uh, our topics this week, uh, activities of daily living and play? Yeah, sure. So the activities of the daily life, they are activities that um, we normally have to do or we need to do, uh, such as uh, feeding or uh, bathing or toileting or even playing. And it's, it depends on the individual, no? It, the, the daily life activities, it depends on if it's an adult or uh, elderly um, uh, people or kids with cerebral palsy. And depending on this uh, difference, we have to adapt the environment uh, or even the equipment, or even if they need different devices uh, to use to make the activity daily life easier and independent. That is the, our, our aim, like physiotherapists or like professionals, and the message that we have to give the families to don't do the things for the for the child, just to encourage them to do it independently. And probably we need to uh, adapt and facilitate uh, the activity. Uh, in the course, or this week, there are different, different parts of, of the activities of the daily life, uh, such as bathing. I love bathing because normally the kids even the normal kids, they love bathing and they feel like they can move um, like free because they, they are lighter and it's a different atmosphere, it's a different texture. So we, there are a lot of, a lot of um, areas like uh, proprioceptual uh, area that it could be more uh, improved in, in bathing. Also, we can use like different concepts like wet, dry, or it's a very good a moment to learn the, the parts of the body uh, to try to, because always we have to try to communicate with the kid. Always, doesn't matter the area like toileting, bathing, or, or dressing, we have to try to communicate, to advise the kid what is going to happen. 
Um, so bathing is a very good atmosphere to because the kit is more relaxed and uh, a different atmosphere also to try to um, try to work the, all these all these items. I think that's then it. toileting. Sorry. Carry on. No, you carry on. <laughs> Okay, then uh, toileting. Toileting is um, is quite difficult because it depends also in the in the handicap uh, or the mental handicap of the of the kid. If there are mental handicap, they cannot communicate and say, "Okay, I want to pee." So you have to guess, and the parents they have to try to make like a schedule and to try to put the kid in the toilet and. But they cannot forget the kid that is in the toilet. They have to just put them for 10 minutes and that's it. Not like half an hour or one hour and the kid there, no? Um, and also try to adapt the toilet, try to adapt the, the, um, the, uh, the access to the toilet. They have to use their imagination because uh, you don't need a lot of money to adapt a, a toilet. Maybe in Europe, yes, but uh, you can do it with... Uh, a little uh, money or using your imagination. Also, dressing and undressing. <laughs> this, I suffer a lot when, when they're in the therapy, uh, when the mothers, they also, they suffer a lot undressing the kid and they put the kid standing up and even it's a, a floppy kid that they doesn't control the head and they try to remove the jumper and they are struggling and they are wasting a lot of time and the kid is in a very bad position. So encourage the mother because they don't waste time they think that they are going to waste time if they do it if they do it correct but it's because they are not used to do it correct so if you show them how to do it correct of course it cannot be perfect because if not the mother she will not do it she will get frustrated but at least a small tips and tricks to tell the mother how to do it a little bit better um, and show her like it's, it's not uh, you don't take more time it's just a different way, but that's it. Um, and also playing. For me, the playing is the most important uh, topic in this in this week uh, because normally we forget about playing. We forget absolutely about the playing. Um, and I want to say that is the the right of the kid to play. Uh, is that it's really important. And not only because they feel free, they can do whatever they want, it's because it's very important to develop, uh, to develop the motor skills, the sensorial skills, the emotional skills, the social skills, the intelligence, the communication. And us, like professionals, will forget about that. So really it's very, very important. Uh, I know that it's difficult to, when you are an adult, to become a child and to to start playing, no? But that's why the physiotherapists that we work with uh, <laughs> cerebral palsy kids, we remain very, very young. <laughs> so I invite all the physiotherapists to play with the kid um, because it's the only way for them to trust you. So then you can, if, if they trust you, you can do whatever you want them to do. And I, I want to give one advice that it works. Uh, well, it works for me in these years working with cerebral palsy kids is that uh, you have to make them understand that they are um, controlling the situation. If they want to work like, I don't know, like they are in the jungle and they are lions, okay? You have to also try to be a lion, for example, Try to make the, to to be uh, in the atmosphere of the that the kid create. So they th the kid think that is controlling the situation, but then you have to direct what you want uh, the kid to do. Okay, it's like you have to be a lion, and but if you want the kid to be in 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 four points, then you have to try to invite him to be in that position because you are a a, a, a therapist and you want him to be in that in that position. But you cannot just grab the kid and put him in that position. You have to convince him. And he has to think that he is controlling the situation, that he is controlling the plane. But really, he's not controlling the plane. He's controlling, but you are directing the kid. Um, and, and also one thing that I suffer a lot also when I was working with, or working with kids, that uh, normally they start crying a lot. 
uh, and it's because they don't want to work with you, they don't know you, they want to be in the lap of the mother, and then you sat there like, oh, what, what I can do? I grab the kid or I, what can I do? So in that situation, you have to put the limit to the kid also. You have to communicate with the kid, telling him that he is or her that is in the in the therapy that now we're going to work with whatever with whatever she wants he can choose um but also you have to put the limit okay it's not like only sitting there convince him him like come on come on come on come on come on no you have to try to convince him with the strategies okay to try to be like a kid like the the previous advice like try to 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 engage the kid in um, in the plane and enjoy it. That is so important to enjoy what you are doing. You have to enjoy with the kid. You don't have to look the watch like for every minute, like, okay, come on, come on. I have one minute less. No, enjoy what you are doing. Um, realize that your work is so important that it will change the the, the life of, of the family and of the kid. And also, sorry, I'm <laughs> and also try to engage the family to play and to and to um, to help the kid in the toileting, bathing, and dressing is so important. It's so important to engage the family to tell them that that is very important that they don't have to do it themselves uh, or they don't have to do it to the kid. That the kid have to be independent. Uh, that is very important. I think that is is very easy to do it or to the mother to to undress the kid or to dress the kid or to feed the kid. It's very easy, but the easy way, way normally is not the correct. So sometimes they, they have to struggle at the beginning, but then they, they, will be, they will really be satisfied themselves because they can see improvement in the kid, really. It's really good to listen to you talk, Lorena. Um, you can tell you're so passionate about working with children with cerebral palsy. I think um, in the activities of daily living, I can just hear you talking about uh, incorporating therapy into those into the uh, incorporating therapy into those activities of daily living and engaging the parents to do that. And then in play, it's so good to hear you talk about how the therapist should just get down and play with the child. I mean. That's really important, isn't it, to think about that it's yeah. not just therapy, that it's play as well. And the communication and the interaction with the child is so important. Um, so it's good to hear you talk yeah, about really. those things. Yeah, really. Yeah, because normally our therapy is, um, or we do a therapy, a therapy just to make the daily life activities real. So then we cannot forget them. It's part of the, it's part of the therapy. So, yes. Yeah, good. Good yeah. to hear. You. Good. We'll be well, we'll be covering all of those topics this week in week five. Um, so we're in week five of the course now, and you've obviously been following the course. Have you got any? Have you picked up on anything during the course, or have any messages for the participants as as the course has been going on? Um, I would like to tell them because I was reading these these weeks uh, the um, the case studies and uh, the forum. Um, and I, I, I would like to tell them to, to be themselves, to don't fear. We are, we are not judging if they know or if they don't know. We just want them to, to, to express and to ask questions and to answer the questions, but themselves. To don't copy the one that, uh, uh, that is up. No, just do yourself. And then you read the rest because also it's, it's nice if you read the, the some comments, not all, but some comments of the rest of the of the colleagues. But do it yourself because here we are not judging. We are not going to put you a, a grade or nothing. It's better if you do it yourself. Uh, if you ask, if you have any questions, and also I w I would like to invite the rest of the colleagues to answer the questions of the of the participants. Um, and and go ahead. And also if you are like a little bit late, don't give up. You can continue doing it. Uh, if it's a lot of information or you don't have time, please uh, go back again, maybe after some weeks, go back again and read because all the information that is there is really, really important and a very good information that probably if you lose it, after a year you will think, oh, shit, what is all this information? So. Uh, I, I will advise them to, 
to collect all the information. If they cannot read it now, they, they keep it and they read it later, but to don't lose it. Yeah, really good advice from about the uh, participating in the course. I think the forums, they're definitely, they're not a place where we're judging people or marking people. The, the idea of the forums is to get people to think about what they're learning and think about their experiences and share their experiences. It's more about the thought process that goes into um, before you write your comment in the forum. And then when you do write your comment in the forum, it's sharing your knowledge where other people can read. So if you have time to just browse through some of the forum, not all of it, there's a lot of learning to be done in there. And also you're very right, This the information in this course will always be available for free. So you can refer back to it at any time in your Trial Physiopedia Plus account. Um, it's not going away. So if you are behind, then don't worry, there's plenty of time to catch up. So thank you, Lorena. Um, thanks for chatting to me Here today. It's going to be a great week. And um, um, yeah, so we'll see you in the forums in week five. Perfect. Very good. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>